It is 1 p.m. Pacific time, 2 p.m. Mountain time, 3 p.m. Central time, 4 p.m. Eastern time, 9 p.m. Western European time, 10 p.m. Central European time, 11 p.m. Eastern European time, midnight further Eastern European time, and I am live on YouTube. Just let me know if you can hear me. And, uh, well, there seems to be one person in here right now. So let's see here. Oh, there's a few people in here now, uh, three people. Uh, so God bless all the people in the chat and thank you very much for being here. I will wait for a few more people to join us. Uh, let's see here. Lisa Leto says, Ken here. Thank you very much for letting me know. I appreciate that. So while I wait for a minute or two, let me just tell me, or well, tell me, tell you, of course, tell you how much I appreciate your support. Without you, I would not be able to do this. If you want to support my work, you can send a super chat. Just click the little dollar sign under the chat. All super chats will be read out loud in the live stream. You can also support my work through PayPal and Patreon or buy some of my merchandise. I will post a few links. Uh, let's see, I'll post my PayPal link. Hopefully it's, it will work. And I'll post a link for, uh, for my Patreon page. You can check that one out. And I'll post a link to my website too. Let's see. And then I won't post any link, more links for a while. I'll just post a link for my website. And uh, if you go to my website, you can just click where it says merchandise. That's, that's a nice way to support me. Uh, and you can order merchandise from there. And I know some people are asking for more merchandise or other kinds of merchandise. and I might sit down one day and try to figure out more things to do. So feel free to give me give me some more ideas. Uh, so now there are nine people in here. Uh, let's look at the chat a little before I go on. Piotr Vidovsik says hi. Well, hello to you. Alleluia says good evening. Good evening to you too. And Alleluia also says have a great time in Poland. You're welcome. Thank you very much. Joel Uldrich says back, oh, oh, welcome, welcome back. And David Norton says, good evening. Good evening to you. And Carol Wurz says, hello, Jay, found you through Twitter. Thank you very much, and hello to you. Good to know that my Twitter feed works. Good. I'm trying to get the word out through different channels, through Twitter, through Facebook. And I'm hopefully due to be sending out not notifications, but I don't really know if that works or not. So I try to send out uh, information through all possible ways. Uh, so I think there are 11 people in here now. Thank you all for being here. And for those who didn't hear, God bless all the people in the chat. So first of all, now I would like to make an announcement on Thursday next week, March 15th, I'm going to Gdansk, Poland. I will be there in the evening and I will, I mean, from Thursday evening and I will be, be there until Monday 19th when I will go back to Oslo around noon, I think the flight was leaving. So if there is anyone in the Gdansk area who wants to meet me, let me know and maybe we can do something on or off camera. I would love to hear what people in Poland have to say about all the stuff going on with Poland and the conflict with EU and so on. I will participate in a conference in Gdansk arranged by, an, uh, by Stop Islamization of Norway. So I will be busy on daytime. However, Friday and Saturday evenings are all good and Sunday after church should also be fine. So if you want to get in touch with me, you can send me an email. You can find my email address if you look under about on my YouTube page, or you can contact me through my Facebook page. I link to my Facebook page in the box below. And you can also cont contact me on Twitter. I link to my, well, to my Twitter channel or whatever you call it in the box below too. So I am sure Gdansk Poland will be very interesting. I intend to try out some of the local food. Hopefully I can interview some people, Norwegians, Poles, or both. And of course, I intend to live stream from my Gdansk hotel room next Saturday, same time as every Saturday. 
hopefully the Wi-Fi on the hotel will be good. I mean, I haven't ordered that hotel, so I don't really know. But hopefully it will work. So just pray about that, that there will be a good internet connection at my Gdansk hotel room. So let's see here. Uh, and now there are 15 people in here. Thank you all for being here. I appreciate that a lot. You know, without you, I would not be able to do what I do. Let's see. Uh, Dogbert52 says, hello from Israel. Well, hello to you. And hello to you too and shalom. All the best and have a safe and productive trip. Thank you very much. And Carol Worth says, God bless you, Jay. And she also says, praying always for you in your travels. Thank you very much. You know, this trip to Poland is special because I was invited and I didn't even have, I, I haven't paid a single dollar for it. The only thing I have to pay for is my food. But that's about it. And if I want to buy something to bring with me back to Norway, because uh, if there's anyone here who doesn't already know that, I'm a Swede. I grew up in Sweden, but I live in Norway since 2006. And uh, if I'm going to go identity politics on you, I, I am also part Finnish. David Norton says it will be good to hear what the Polish really think, because we certainly won't hear the truth on mainstream media. I agree with you on that, David. And Marcin Salewski says, hi. Well, hi to you too. So now I would like to talk about the conflict in Norway between the hijab activist Sumaya Yirida Ali, or maybe she's a so-called anti-racist activist. I'm not really sure what she is, but she's an activist on the left at least. Well, the conflict between her, the left, and the Norwegian prime minister Anna Solberg on one side, and Norwegian alternative media, especially Reset.no and its editor Helge Luros on the other side. Uh, the story starts with Sumaya Yirida Ali, 19 years old. Born in Somalia, she lives in Bode in the north of Norway. She has made herself known as a debater in Norway. She wears a hijab and she was recently given a prize as the voice of the year by the Norwegian leftist paper Nattogdag. That means night and day, if anyone wonders. While receiving the prize, she shouted, F Sylvie Listhaug, I think you know which word. I, I'm, I'm not going to use that kind of language, but I think you know. And F the police. Sylvie Listhaug is the previous immigration minister in Norway, and she has been pretty tough. I mean, to be a Norwegian minister. Now she is the justice minister instead. This, of course, these comments by Sumaya Yirida Ali annoyed a lot of people. And there were articles commenting on this, especially in Reset.no, a Norwegian alternative media site run by the editor Helge Luros. I have written some, some things for that paper too, although not about this case, but I have written some things, things for that paper too. And there were a lot of articles and a lot of angry comments. In the common fields of Reset.no, I haven't seen any comments that threaten Sumaya Yirida Ali's life though. Supposedly such a comment was posted. But that comment was not posted at reset.no, but in a comment at the editor Helge Luros's Facebook page, where someone wrote that they should put Ali on fire. Of course, that's not an acceptable comment. Someone called Sumaya Yirida Ali a black-headed girl. Maybe that was in bad taste, but I can't see how that would be illegal. And as far as I know, Luros removed that comment as fast as he, as quick as he saw it. Uh, I mean the comment about putting her on fire, not the one about her being a black-headed girl, which that could be funny, that could be bad taste, but it shouldn't be illegal. Anyway, what happened after a while was that the Prime Minister of Norway, Anna Solberg, involved herself in this debate. Anna Solberg belongs to Høyre, which is Norway's pseudo-conservative party. Høyre literally means right, like in the right wing. If you ask me, they're not conservatives at all, but I believe they were at some point in their history. Today, they are just a bunch of left liberals who might like the royal family and who like to claim to be conservatives. Under this government, seven-year-olds have been given the so-called right to change the legal gender. Okay, they need parental approval. But it doesn't sound very conservative, does it? So let's get back on track here to what, what I'm aiming at. On March 8th, uh, the international, uh, well, this, the Soviet Women's Day, or I mean the International Women's Day, Anna Solberg invited some women to have breakfast with her. I believe all of them were women belonging to ethnic minorities, but maybe there was someone of Norwegian background there too, apart from Prime Minister Anna Solberg. However, Anna Solberg then spoke about the attacks on Somaya Yirid Ali, of course, the verbal attacks in the common fields and stuff like that. 
and she said that it quote might be religious racism close quote religious racism have you heard such a stupid term a religion is not a race not an ethnicity not a skin color a religion is a worldview and a set of ideas divine or not and trust me on this one Erna Solberg did not refer to hostility towards Buddhists. It was, as always, Islam. Because apparently the so-called conservative Erna Solberg thinks that Islam needs special treatment. We must not offend Muslims, right? Hey, Erna Solberg, are you afraid of Islam? If not, what are you thinking? Why have you not yet converted if you like Islam? And it's not only in Norway. In the UK, Paul Golding and Jada Fransen from Britain first have been sentenced to prison. In Sweden, there are several people now being investigated for hate speech for having posted things about Islam. In France, textbooks in school tell French kids that it is illegal to criticize Islam. The list just goes on and on and on. Western Europe is going downhill, and this is because of appeasement to Islam. Islam was invited to Europe by politically correct leftists and this PC mentality is now in every major one of the old parties, including pseudo-conservatives like Höyre in Norway, the moderates in Sweden, and Tories in the UK. Uh, by the way, shout out to my British viewers. I intend to visit London from April 12th until April 16th, so you can feel free to contact me too. Uh, and I would like to add this. This is why I am not a racist. The problems facing the West and the world is not about ethnicity or race. It is about ideas. It is Marxism, political correctness, and Islam. Those are, in my view, the major problems. Marxism is turning South Africa into a mess. It has made Venezuela a mess, just like it did with Russia a century ago. Political correctness is turning Western Europe and Canada into a mess, like it did with the United States under Obama. Islam is making Islamic countries horrible places, and it is creating conflicts and no-go zones in Western countries and fought crime law laws, by the way. So what makes the world better? Western civilization, the way it used to be, did. And what was Western civilization based on? It was based on Judeo-Christian values. Western civilization is Jewish in its heritage and Christian in its nature. This, combined with the heritage from the old Greek philosophers and the English and American tradition of liberty, none of this has anything to do with ethnicity or race and everything to do with ideas and culture. While South Africa is going downhill fast, Botswana is going really good. Botswana is in South Africa's neighborhood, but Botswana is not a Marxist country. It is a Christian country which went from, a, from third world to middle income country in one generation. By the way, I really want to visit Botswana one day, but that might have to wait until next year. Uh, before I go on, I'll look at the chat now. Uh, Marcin Salevsky says, Gdansk, beautiful city. You'll find Gdynia support quite appealing also. Yes, I hope I'll be able to sw see some of the neighboring cities too. Uh, John Morley says, please mention some of the arrests made by the UK government. Golding, Franson, Selner, Pettibone, etc. I don't know about Selner, so please inform me about that. But I, I, I just mentioned Golding and Franson, and I will keep on talking about them because it's really horrible, the things going on in the UK. And as I said, I'll, I'll go to London in April, but I might actually have to hide which hotel I'm staying at to avoid being arrested myself, because the way things are going in the UK, you know. Uh, Bill B says, hello, my friend, and hello, everyone. Hello to you, too. Carol Worf sends uh, five thumbs up, I think that is. Thank you very much. John Jake says, the reason her country failed is because of their beliefs, way of life, practice, and politics. I'm not sure which country that is, but in general, that is usually the reason why countries fail. Uh, Carol Worth says, sorry, had to answer phone. I'm back. Okay, welcome back. Uh, we have 19 people in here now, and that's great. So I hope everyone's everyone is having a, a good sun Saturday, whether it's afternoon like in america or evening tonight like it's in europe i hope everyone's having a good time uh, before i go on i'll have a little water
So apart from the things I've already brought up, which we could discuss in the chat or whatever, uh, we also have some other things going on. I'll just mention sort of some of the headlines or stuff going on. Uh, we have Turks threatening Greece again. We have Donald Trump being willing to talk to Kim Jong-un of North Korea. And uh, of course, other stuff going on too. And I think there are about 20 people in here now. 21 people. That's great. Uh, so thank you all for being here. And uh, since there are some new people in here, I'll tell you this again. If you want to support my work, you can send a super chat by clicking the dollar sign under the chat. Or you can sort of support me through PayPal and Patreon. Or you can buy some merchandise. So I will post these links again. And by the way, if you send a super chat, I will read out uh, the super chat loud in the live stream. I will read out some of the other comments too. But super chats will always be read out. Uh, so let's post a few of these links again. Uh, I got them here. Let's see. I'll have to find my PayPal link again. It's here. I'll start with a PayPal link. And then I'll send my Patreon link. And my website. If you go to my website and you want some merchandise, just click where it says merchandise. You'll see it. Uh, Lisa Leto says, also, Brittany Pettibone is being held in UK airport three days. I didn't know about the three days part. I just, just before I started this live stream, I just saw someone else mentioning that Brittany Pettibone was uh, arrested. Uh, so I don't know what to say about the UK. What happened to to the British tradition of liberty. Did I forget about Magna Carta? Is this all some kind of appeasement to Islam? Well, you know, that's what I think. But anyway, uh, so that's why I'm telling you, I'm going to London, but I won't announce which hotel I'm staying at. Uh, because you never know, maybe the authorities will come after me. I mean, with the UK, you never know. Although I'm, I think my channel is small enough for me to fly under the radar, but I don't know. Maybe, maybe there is someone in Westminster watching this. What do I know? Uh, Assyrian King says, hello, my dear friend from London, UK. Hello to you too. Uh, we could, we should really, 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 really talk in London, Assyrian King. So send me a message. You can send me an email or you can send me a message on Twitter or Facebook. It's all good. Uh, if you want to, that would be great. I also want to hear what British people have to say. Uh, and I guess we could arrange, I could talk to people without showing their faces too. I've been thinking about that because when Tim Poole went to Sweden, he interviewed a Swedish psychologist who, who, who was afraid for, to share his, uh, his face. And I understand why. So I guess something like that could happen in Britain too. Uh, Flatwing Flyer just sent me a super chat. Thank you very much. Uh, that's great. So I appreciate that a lot. Uh, so let's see. Uh, by the way, uh, do you people here in the chat? Do you have anything you want to, you want me to talk about, or anything you you want to discuss? We could do that. Uh, do you have something? Uh, do, do you have some uh, some special stuff you do in the weekend? I mean, do you have any habits or traditions or what do you do to rewind from, from everyday life? Platform Flyer says, you're welcome. That's great. Carol Worth says, could happen anywhere these days. I guess it could. I have a hard time believing I would get uh, arrested at a US airport, though. I'm more worried about go going to the UK, actually. Uh, but um, I'm, about to, I'm about to apply for, for a journalism visa for the, for the US. So... You can keep that in your minds and prayers. I will I will send an application next week. Mr. Super 101 says hi. Well, hello to you too. Hi to you. So the thing about Norway, I, I, we could take this, you know, coming from Sweden, and I, I have a lot of Swedish Facebook friends. I have some personal friends in Sweden. I have Swedish relatives. And Swedes who are more to the right, tend to believe that Norway is a sane country. 
at least when it comes to freedom of speech is, issues, stuff like that. However, I keep on telling them the only reason you think Norway seems to be a sane country is because you are comparing with Sweden. Compared to Sweden, Norway is, is sane and Finland is sane. That, but that's of course just because Sweden is really insane, but usually when something crazy happens in Sweden or when they in institute some crazy policies, Norway follows five or 10 years later. That's been the way it's, it's been. And uh, actually, Prime Minister Anna Solberg, already back in 2003, uh, which when she was, uh, she was some kind of minister back then, but she wasn't the prime minister. Uh, I think she, uh, back then she, well, she was a part of, of that government, which was more of a center-right government or a so-called center-right channel. Uh, but she, uh, then she, she said that having Sharia courts in Norway would be a good idea. And apparently she hasn't changed her mind or she hasn't said anything about that recently. She, instead, she makes these comments on religious racism, which I think is stupid. Uh, a Syrian king says, I would advise all my friends tonight to watch and listen to the famous and controversial speech of Enoch Powell called the Rivers of Blood back in 1968. You know, I never did that, but maybe I should because I don't know what to think about that speech until I've heard it. So I guess I, I, guess I should do that. I should put that on my to-do list for when I'm done with this, uh, with this stream. Oh, I just have to find something to write on. Let's see something over here so i'll just write that down rivers of blood because yeah you know i i don't know but maybe it's good maybe it's not oh and you know oh one moment skipper clement uh, just sent me sent me a super chat Thank you very much for your donation. And he also sent a message, message saying, is it true that when you go vote in Sweden, then you have to go and pick up a color coded piece of paper depended, depending on the desired political party? Uh, I think they are all in the same color, but what they do in Sweden, uh, if you go and vote in Sweden, every party has its own sort of piece of paper and the paper will say, for instance, the social, social Democrats, the moderate coalition party, the liberal party, the Sweden Democrats, etc. But these are all in, di in display. And you have to pick one, and then you can go to the voting booth. So everyone sees which one you pick, unless some people pick one of each because they want to keep it a secret what you are voting for. But most people just pick their favorite party and go in the voting booth, which makes it all stupid. Even in Norway, they have all these uh, pieces of paper inside of the voting booth, not up on public display. I know there has been Danish, uh, there has been, a, there was a debate in Danish media a few years ago about this, but the Swedes weren't listening. Uh, Flatwin Flyer says, Sharia courts in any Western country is suicide. I agree. Stone says, Enoch Powell was right. You know, I will watch that speech before I, before I comment too much on it, but I could say this. On the ideological scene, or I mean, when it comes to ideas, I, I assume I would agree with him. It depends on which way he said it. You know, I'm more of a pro Western civilization than I, I'm not an identitarian, but I'm all for Western civilization. So I can't really comment on what he said before I watched the speech. Uh, that, that wouldn't be fair of me. I'll, I'll try to be fair here. Uh, David Norton says, if the Sweden Democrats get say 30 percent in the election how can a government be formed i think if the sweden democrats would get 30 percent and the other seven parties would get would get 70 percent it's possible that this that the social democrats would form a government together with either a moderate coalition party which is the so-called conservative party or maybe with the center party who are really crazy, but they are supposedly a right-wing party or some kind of economic liberals, i.e. libertarians. But I, it will be a messy situation. And given, given the constitutional changes that are coming up in Sweden, 
which the moderate coalition party now has declared that they are supporting, I have to tell people, please vote for the Sweden Democrats. I might have some disagreements with them. Right now, I don't care about those disagreements because the changes of the Swedish constitution to make Sweden even more conformist and even, even less freedom of speech, that just has to be stopped. And you can also vote for the one party in parliament that wants to stop it. Not everyone agrees with me on this, but that's my opinion on that. And that's what I'm telling people who are allowed to vote in Sweden. Please vote for the Sweden Democrats. I want them, now I actually want them to have their own majority. Because that might be the only way to, to stop the, the changes in the Swedish constitution that are going after the freedom of the press, which is awful. Uh, Leonardo Russo says, good evening. Uh, good evening to you. G good evening to you too, Leonardo Russo. And uh, well, I, uh, I think you are from Italy. I mean, I've just assumed that by your name, but I haven't looked into what's been going on in Italy the last few days because, well, I've been busy. I, I have hundreds of stories in my bookmarks, things I thought I was going to talk about, but it, I always end up having to delete 90% of all the stuff before I make my videos or before I make live streams because there are so many things going on all over the world, especially, I mean, I... I focus on Sweden, on Europe, but then I also talk a little about Canada, sometimes about the United States, sometimes about South Africa, Australia. It, so, you know, some things I talk about because I find them in, interesting and important, but I always keep a special eye on Sweden and Scandinavia. Oh, Leonardo Richus, Russo says, actually I am Brazilian, but my grandparents are Italians by mom and dad's side. Oh, so maybe you, I don't know about the Italian laws. Maybe you still are an Italian citizen then, if the Brazilians allow that. I don't know how that works. Actually, Brazil is an interesting country. From what I've been told from, uh, from a Brazilian Facebook friend of mine, there are things going on there too that are not very funny. Uh, that's what he says. Uh, Skipper Clement says, thanks, so you don't have a secret voting system. That must partly explain why Sweden Democrats only gets 30%. I think that's, uh, yes, I think that there could be a connection there. And also because Swedes have been for centuries very conformist. You don't want to rock the boat. You don't want to stand out. Instead, you want to be somewhere in the middle of the road. You walk with the crowd. and." Uh, I mean, since I assume you're from Denmark, there's a book uh, called, uh, what's it called again? It's by Mikael Jalving. He wrote a book about Sweden. I'm trying to take a look at my bookshelf to see if I can find it. Oh yeah, there it is. Uh, the book is called Absolut Sverige. If you haven't read it, you should read that one. That's really funny. And he interviews people in Sweden and he tries to analyze Sweden. And that's the best book on Sweden I have read so far. Hopefully my book will be better, but well, we'll see. Because uh, I am writing a book on Sweden, uh, and I'm I'm aiming at roughly forty-five thousand words. Right now I have twenty thousand, so we'll see. Maybe maybe I'll be done by the summer or by the fall. We'll see. It takes more time than I thought it would be. Archie Demble said says, "Have you see seen how Tommy Robinson knocked out emigrant in Rome?" Uh, yes, I saw that, and uh, well, Tommy Robinson was attacked, and I would not be crazy enough to attack Tommy Robinson because that guy sure knows, knows how, to, how to fight. I'm not a street fighter. I mean, I'm working out. I call that my 40 years crisis when I realized that I'm not getting any younger. So I have to do something. So I try to work out a little, but I don't go out in the streets and fight. But if, if I'm being attacked, well, if I'm attacked, I'll try to defend myself. What can you do? Leonardo Russo says Brazil is becoming very conservative. Our next president will make Trump a left-wing guy. His name is Jair Bolsonaro. He is a military Christian and very conservative. Hmm, maybe I should Google that guy and see what I can find about him. That might be interesting. Jair Bolsonaro. I might look into that guy actually. That that might be interesting to see. When is the next election coming up in, in Brazil? Uh, there is an election. There was an election in Italy 
which I think went well, but I don't think they have worked worked out yet. Uh, there is an election coming up in Canada next year. I certainly hope Trudeau loses, although he's a very good source for news, but I don't want Canada to go downhill. Oh, this year in Brazil. Okay, I, I hope that election goes well, because I think that Brazil has had way too many leftist policies, and the way the way it looks to me, it hasn't been working very well. Uh, a Syrian king says, I was also interviewed back about five months ago in London on a day of demonstration called the last day of silence. And uh, my interview called the war will, will happen, trust me, please watch it. Uh, Skipper Clement says, thanks for the tip. I will have a look at the Mikael Jalving book. It is hard for us Danes to understand you Swedes. You know what? I, I can, I'll go get my copy and show it, sh show it to you. One moment. So this book is, uh, is Mikael Jalving's book on Sweden. I bought it a few years ago. And actually, actually they wanted to, uh, it was very difficult to, to get it translated into Swedish. Uh, the translator couldn't get any of the any of the major uh, uh, publishers to publish it, so it ended up being published in Swedish on a British publisher. So that was well, an insane story, although sort of expected. Uh, I have Mikael Jalving among my Facebook friends, and I've uh, I'd like to talk to him, but he hasn't responded to that message. Actually, you know. I sometimes contact people and I have no idea if they're going to respond or not. I, I went to Tommy Robinson's uh, web, website a few days ago and sent him a message, told him I'm going to, the U, to, to London in April on these dates and I would love to talk to you. And I told him a little about what I do. I don't expect him to respond, but if he does, I'll be thrilled. Let me tell you that. Uh, so yeah. So the, the full title of this book is uh, Absolute Sverige and Reise i Tälsheden Sverige, which means Absolute Sweden, a journey in the in the realm of silence. And that's that's a pretty good title, actually. That's pretty much what I'm saying about Sweden, that people keep their opinions to themselves unless they have the, the publicly approved opinion. And that's, I guess, that's getting back to the voting system. That's where we have the problem. That's where there is a problem. People will not uh, don't want other people to see that they are that they are taking the the paper saying Sweden Democrats, for instance. You know, when I grew up, before the Sweden Democrats became a real thing, when I grew up, the moderates were were sort of the party that you shouldn't vote for, unless you came from a rich neighborhood. You shouldn't vote for the moderates, which was well. The conservatives, although they weren't weren't very conservative back then either, but they were better before than they are now. Let's put it that way. But now you can vote for the conservatives or the so-called conservatives, but you can't vote for the Sweden Democrats. Uh, Flatwing Flyer says twelve percent of the world's population live in Europe. Yeah, yes, yeah, so yeah, that sounds about right. Leonardo Russo says citizens that experienced very left-wing politics like Brazil, Venezuela, Cuba, and Bolivia are very anti-socialist uh, nowadays. Thanks God the right, the right is rising on our continent. We are becoming organized. I really hope that uh, South America turns right wing. I think Chile got a good president. I'm not sure I think they did. I saw something on, on the YouTube channel about that. And I, it seems like the countries in what used to be known as Eastern Europe, but which really is Central Europe, countries like Poland and Hungary, it seems like they learned their lesson too. It was a hard lesson, but sadly, we don't learn by other people's mistakes, uh, not on a personal level and not on a civilizational level. That's just the way it seems to be. So why did they try socialism in Venezuela? Couldn't they just look at the track record and say, okay, it failed in Russia, it failed in China, it failed in North Korea, it failed in Cuba, it failed in Albania, 
it failed in East Germany, it failed in Poland, plus a bunch of other people, the other countries. But instead they say, but we'll do it the right way. Because I guess this is the thing with people with utopian ideas. Socialism is a utopian idea. And uh, left liberalism is a utopian idea. All these utopian ideas, they tend to think that history begins with them. We don't have to look at the historical experience because we have a theory. We know how to do it the right way. And if it's only done the right way, we will create heaven on earth, which, of course, is impossible. Uh, I mean, as a Christian, I'd say man cannot make heaven on earth. We can try to make society better. We can try to keep evil at bay, but we can't create a perfect society. That's just not possible. It's not possible for people because people are are full of flaws. And what I mean, they tried some of that stuff too. When they founded Philadelphia, they had laws against lying and stuff like that. And it sounds good, doesn't it? Yeah, but it failed. And uh, Geneva was uh, a theocracy under John Calvin, and that failed miserably too. So all these utopian things, it always fails. And uh, when it comes to socialist utopia or the attempts to create it, it ends up with mass surveillance, oppression, slaughter of people, genocide. It's just terrible. And But you really can't argue that with, with someone who believes in Marxism because Marxism is a substitute for religion. Instead of believing in God, they believe in Marxism. And I know, I was, I, I used to be one. John Jake says, have you noticed all bad guys want to take over the world? Communists, Nazis, socialists, or Islamic fundamentalists? Yeah, you're right. They all want world dominion. That's correct. And I'm like, I would like every country in the world to, to have conservative views and uh, to adopt to Western civilization. They can keep some of their own culture too. That would be nice. But I don't want, any, want us to force anything on anyone. I just say, we will create a good society here. It won't be perfect because man cannot make perfect society. But we will create a good society here. We will defend our country. If you come here to visit, you are welcome. If you come here to invade, we'll fight you. If you want to move here, we will figure out if you're a good or a bad guy before we let you in. Something like that. Uh, and if other countries follow because they're inspired, like how Botswana has risen from being a third world country to a middle income country, I have, I have never heard of any Botswanans, Botswanan people escaping to Europe because apparently they don't feel a need to do so. Anyway, so... Well, that I guess I guess you just know where I'm going with this rant or whatever you call it. Uh, so I believe more in trying to create a good society and being an inspiration than trying to force a system on anyone. But of course, if someone attacks you, you have to respond. And if someone attacks your friends, you might have to respond then too. If Iran starts bombing Israel, the West should help Israel. Uh, Okay, maybe I shouldn't bring up Israel. I know that could be touchy. But anyway, you get my point. Uh, Carol Worth says, that's true, Jay. Thank you very much. And Assyrian King says, spot on, Johnny Boy. If I'm Johnny Boy, well, thank you. I'm not sure if I am, but I guess you could call me that. Leonardo Russo says, Europe, we pray for you. If you fall, South America will fall too. You think it's that bad? You think that South America will follow Europe sort of downhill. I mean, I've noticed that Canada seems to be following Western Europe for some reason. Uh, Leonardo Russo asks, if Europe and USA fails, we fail, or we fall, okay. Well, I want Europe to be good. I want, uh, I want uh, South America to be good, and so on. Uh, Archie Dembo says, I won't die for Israel. No, you don't have to. But uh, I'm saying if Iran attacks, we should help them. But I'm not saying that we have to send every soldier from every Western country. Uh, Tyron Tutelis says, hey, Swede, 
What is your opinion on President Trump and Kim Jong Un? I think it's great that they, that they are going to meet, or as, as I understand, they will meet, uh, and I think that's great. Uh, and actually, I think this is interesting. When Trump was elected, or before Trump was elected, when he was running, a lot of people in in Western Europe thought that uh, if Trump wins, this will it will be chaos in the world, and it will be World War Three and stuff like that. And I was like, no, it won't. If Hillary wins, you will get that situation, but not with Trump. And Trump has been, well, he hasn't been playing tough because he is tough. Trump is an alpha male, and countries around the world they notice this, they respect it. They might not like him, but they respect him. Even in North Korea, I think their leaders noticed that okay, he won't get away with stuff. He had to, so he has to talk to Trump, and whatever comes out of that, we'll see. Some people say that. Kim Jong Un is going to fool Trump. I don't think that's going to happen. I don't think Trump is that easily fooled. I mean, Trump was at one point uh, very rich, rich. Then he went bankrupt, and then he was then he got rich again. He's not a fool. Uh, Leonardo Russo says South America is a colony of USA and Europe, and sadly becoming a Chinese colony. Yeah, actually. The Chinese, uh, the way the Chinese do business, we, we really need to to worry about that. Hey, Archie Dembo, you are in my chat. That means you're in my living room. So if you are going to post that kind of stuff, I will silence you. I am not joking. I'm fine that you don't want to fight for Israel, but those kind of uh, of posts. I'll I'll remove them. If you post any more like that, I will kick you out. Carol Worth says he's a real man. Yes, exactly. And yeah. I won't go on that rant right now. I'll, I'll save it for some, for some other day. Uh, John Jake says Trump is a great man. He's making a difference. The left want an organized decline if, if, uh, of the West. They hate Western powers to be su successful. Yeah, I think that's basically right. That's, uh, that's why I think, well, liberals in the US, they want Trump to fail. And I mean, I don't think conservatives in the U.S. wanted Obama to fail. I don't think they wanted him to turn the U.S. into some kind of laughing stock of the world, which he almost, which he almost did. I don't think they wanted that, but it's my impression that liberals actually want Trump to fail. So uh, we've been here for a little more than forty minutes. And uh, uh, so uh, I used to ask you this, but I'm not sure. Uh, there are some names here. I recognize most names in this chat, but there are there are at least some new names. So well, you could always tell me what brought you here, uh, why you well how you found my channel or how you found this live stream. Uh, Dogbert52 says Trump basically breaks the Bretton Woods Accord, where the entire West got free trade and security guarantees from the US for US influence. I'm not exactly sure what you mean. Are you referring to the steel tires or something like that? Uh, Dogbert52 says the Americans got short chain since the fall of the Berlin Wall. I guess you could say that. The hypocrisy of Europe is that Europeans complain about the steel tariffs and they think that the EU is some kind of free trade thing. Well, it's not. The EU is a trade union or a tariff union. The EU might have free, free trade internally, but try to sell something to, to Europe and there's, there are all these tariffs. Uh, when I was trying to order things from, from uh, Amazon, Almost everything I was looking for would come up as a, don't we don't ship to Norway because even though Norway is not a member of uh, 
of the European Union, Norway is still in the European Economic Agreement, which means Norway still has to abide by the European Union. So when I was trying to order items from the United States, I would get this message, won't ship to Norway. But they made some kind of deal. So now, it, now I can order more stuff from Amazon that's sent from the US. Sometimes I know, I know that Amazon also has some kind of, they have some kind of warehouse or something like that in Frankfurt, Germany, I think. And they sent books to me that way. But some other stuff, they might only have it in Seattle or wherever it is, and they can't ship it here. But they've started to ship things. I think they made some kind of deal. Uh, Joel Aldrich says, we just wanted Obama to work for America. He worked counterproductively for the US. Yeah, that's, that's my impression too. Leonardo Russo says, Trump winning was very good for the right in Brazil and Latin America. Oh, absolutely. I think it was good for the European right too. Although it kind of separates, uh, well, the true right from the false right. It separates real conservatives from pseudo conservatives. And our old right parties in Europe are, are mainly left liberals and pseudo conservatives. Dogbert52 says, well, I got your channel for friends from Norway, actually. The, the, that kind of knew my positions about Western civilization. And now I follow and more importantly, share your excellent and reasonable oh, thank you, content. Oh, thank you very much. Uh, John Jake says, I found this channel looking for people with a similar view to my own. I'm not raised a racist or fascist. I love my country and my freedoms. That kind of sums, sums up my opinion, too. Uh, Skipper Clement says, I live in Copenhagen. If Sweden f fails, it will spill over to Denmark in one way or another. That's why I found you. I am worried for Sweden. I used to go, go shopping a lot in Malmö. Yes, actually, uh, the Norwegian blogger uh, Fjordman, who now lives in exile somewhere else because, because he can't live in Norway, uh, he has several times made the point that the biggest threat to Norway is not Russia. The biggest threat to Norway and to the other Nordic countries is Sweden. If Sweden fails, it will spill over to the neighboring countries. And I think it will. So both Denmark and Norway and Finland, they will all suffer if, if Sweden fails. And Sweden is heading in the wrong direction. So that's my basis for hoping for, I don't think it's going to happen. I don't think the Sweden Democrats will get their own majority. But I hope they do, or I hope the other parties will wake up really fast and realize they have to do something. Because uh, otherwise, Sweden will turn into will turn into a to a failed state. And if it does, Denmark, Norway, and Finland will be, will be next. They might not be failed states, but there will be a lot of people leaving Sweden and going to the neighboring countries. Also, because once you have a Swedish passport. And it's not that difficult to become a Swedish citizen. Once you have one, you can move wherever you want in, in the Nordic countries. Uh, Carol Wirth says, I found you when Tim Pool was reporting on Sweden. So glad I did. I'm Oh, I'm glad too. Tyron Twitelli says, Swede, hey friend. How do you usually handle other people's views in regards to the political state of your nation and others? Uh, it depends on what you mean. Uh, I mean... I've been doing this for a while now. If you mean people that I come across through this YouTube channel and through other things I do sort of online, you might have noticed I don't respond to every comment in the comment field anymore. I respond to most comments. Sometimes I respond to comments that I personally f find stupid, but I respond anyway to make a point. But I won't debate people I, I won't debate crazy people anymore or people I consider crazy. I might make a point a point or two for the audience or maybe to get the people to, to person to think. But if they just keep on going, I'll just fine. Uh, I'll I'll leave it there. Uh, Rex Sigmar says, "Hello, Sweden. Do you know anything about the polls of the coming election in of Sweden?" There was a poll that came out a few days ago, uh, and according to that poll. Uh, the Social Democrats are still the largest party. At, I think it was 27%. The Moderate Coalition Party, the pseudo-conservatives, they are 
around 21 percent i think but they are they are decreasing and uh, the sweden democrats are up at around 18 percent that was an increase uh, i think there are a lot of people who who left the Sweden Democrats and went to the moderates when the moderates started sounding tough. But then the moderates said recently that we are not going to cooperate with the Sweden Democrats and we are not going to, uh, and we are going to vote for the proposed changes of the Swedish constitution. So I think there were some people who left them again and went back to the Sweden Democrats. So the election this fall will be interesting. Whatever happens, it will be very interesting. And hopefully I'll be able to follow to follow the election and do some kind of live stream while while looking at the numbers if i will be able to get i guess i will have to install some kind of vpn to get to get swedish tv i don't know how that works because i will probably be on the other side of the atlantic in the fall tyron to attend to a tele says i see i live in a very democratic state here in the united states it's hard to get your point across to these individuals even when you have the facts to back up your point. I think uh, the thing is, if you're reasonable, you use facts. But a lot, of, a lot of people won't use facts. They go by feelings. And trying to argue with facts towards someone who argues with feelings just won't work. And in that case, if I come across those people face to face or in real life, I just stop, I just stop, stop discussing with them because I don't see I don't see any point in it because uh, I mean it's just a waste of time and energy. Uh, Alleluia says Swedes are buying real estates in northern Poland lately. Yes, uh, that I, I I could I could see that absolutely. Skipper Clement says uh, I'm really sorry to say this, but we need to end the Nordic passport union or at least exclude Sweden from it. I will lobby my danish politicians for this sweden made its own bed that's what i've been saying too for years now i've been saying this since uh, i think it's since i've been saying this since 2014 and there have been one or two politicians in norway that has said this too but most of them won't listen to that but yes i think at least sweden has to be excluded from that passport union for i mean that's just uh, for the sake of survival John Jake says the left point of view is about feelings, but the right use facts. Yeah, in general, that's that's correct. Lisa Letto says, I saw an old poll that said Swedish are happiest people in the world. I think that if you are a politically correct uh, atheist conformist, sure, then, then you probably be, will be very happy in Sweden, especially if, if you're far away from any no-go zone. Otherwise, you will just be miserable. There's a reason why I I enjoyed being in the Midwest so very much as compared to, to being in Scandinavia. And hopefully I'll be in the Midwest soon again. I don't know how long time this process is going to take. Uh, let's see. A Syrian king asks for my, for my email address. I'll send it to you, a Syrian king, and see if you can if you can copy it. So I'll send this to the Syrian king. So you could just copy that to Syrian king and and send me an email. Yeah, Tim Pool is an interesting person. I've been following him. I've been following actually I have been following him since he went to Sweden. I don't watch his content every day, but I do when I have the time. I watch on watch his content, and I think he is more of a, I think he's more of a left libertarian, something like that. But he, uh, I am noticing that he has kind of been slightly red red pilled since he went to Sweden, because he's been looking into the stuff going on in Europe and also in U.S. colleges and stuff like that. And it sounds like he, he doesn't really want to go to the right. But a lot of the stuff he's saying resonates very, very well with me. I mean, okay, he wants a welfare state and stuff like that, that I don't support, but 
when he comes when he, when he talks about cultural issues or maybe we should say free free speech issues that's where he's really going right on the free speech is, issues uh, i guess so not really not not economic policies and not really culture but when it comes to free speech i think he has seen that he sort of he has to align with us and i think the same thing might have happened to sorgon of Akkad. sorgon is i think sorgon is back on youtube again but you know you never you never know when they'll close you down actually that's why i think you should uh, you should also follow my account at minds.com i think some of you do but really because i never know when youtube is going to shut me down if they will i don't know hopefully not but well well you can look at my minds.com account too and uh, i have a link in the box below i could give you a link to it too while i'm at it let's see here is minds but i can't i can't live stream on minds they they don't have a function for that uh, YouTube is still a great place for all these functions and all the stuff you can do on YouTube. It's just uh, all this silencing of conservative voices that's bothering me. Let's see. Here is the, there's my minds.com channel. You can follow that one too. Uh, Carol Wurr says, but don't tell him I said so. Mm. I won't tell Tim. Uh, I'd like to talk to him too, but well, we'll see. Uh, Flatwing Flyer says, "Have you seen the Belgian Patriots have t have taken a stand against mass immigration?" I saw some picture uh, going around on Facebook. I think I haven't looked into it, but I saw it was the Flams Belong or something like that. I'm not sure. It was it was something about that. Uh, John Jake says, it is amazing how fast things change. Uh, my hometown in a gen generation changed from a vi vibrant community to a colony of Pakistan with no freedom of speech and persecution of the in indigenous community. And you know, that's the same thing that's happening to, to part of Oslo and some other, uh, some other towns in Norway and what's happened to a lot of places in Sweden. So it's Pakistanis, but not only Pakistanis. I think so. As I say, this is about Islam. And it's not only about Islam. It's also about Western politicians who don't dare to stand up for, for our civilization. Because if someone comes to Britain, first of all, you should check, is this, is this person going to be, is this a good person? Or will this person be a burden on, on our system? That's the first thing. If this person won't be a burden on the system, then, then you would say, OK. You can come here, but you have to assimilate. If you if you don't want to assimilate, if you come here to change our civilization, you can't come. You should leave. Something like that. I mean, that's a very short version, but something like that. Flatwing Flyer says, Schilden Frinden. Oh, okay. More things I should look into. It's actually pretty good. I'm getting more ideas by talking to you people. Let's see. Schilden Frinden. Worth a watch on YouTube. Of course, the prote protest was interrupted by leftists. Yeah, I know that Stop Islamization of Norway had some kind of, a, uh, not exactly protest, but they, they were doing something on the streets on March 8th, holding up signs uh, while highlighting the highlighting the the problems with Islam and women, and they were chased out of of the streets by by leftists. I would have gone if I had known they were going to have that, but well, I didn't know. Uh, so hopefully, uh, if I get to know, know that they're doing something in Oslo, I can go there and record uh, and just put it on YouTube. That would be interesting. Although subtitling is not fun, I'll tell you that. I've done a few videos in in Swedish, but subtitling them is horrible. It takes hours, and then people complain about the subtitles anyway. So that's why I always ask people I interview what what they think about doing it in English, even if they happen to be Swedish or Norwegian. And usually people say they're fine with that. <laughs> Piotr Vedovsik says, I'm from Poland and I'm pretty sure you'll have a great time in Gdansk. Enjoy it. Oh, thank you, I will. I was, uh, I was in Gdansk back in 97, 
So I was I've been there once, but that's a long time ago. I was 19 years old then. Uh, and I'm sure it's changed since then. And I was only there for one night. So I didn't get to see that much of the town. I was only there traveling through going back to Sweden. We took the ferry from Gdansk to, well, to one of the, to Stockholm or close to Stockholm, Nynäshamn. That doesn't say much to most people here. But there was a ferry from Gdansk going to that small town in Sweden. And since then, I haven't been there. So it will be interesting to see both Gdansk and Poland again. John Jake says, you have to ask why are coming? Is it because you love our culture and way of life, or do you just want economic wealth and promote your own culture and beliefs? That's a pretty good way to put it. Yeah. And you know, you should do some kind of Islamic faith, faith test. If you're a Muslim, you can't come. I mean, okay, that sounds harsh, I know. But that's one of the policies. If if I would be if I would be put in put in charge, that would be a policy I would I would I would institute immediately. I mean, say for the sake of argument, let's say that I would have dictatorial powers or that I would have a majority in parliament. I would just institute: if you're a Muslim, you can't come. I don't care if you're if you're white, black, brown, or yellow, but if you're a Muslim, you can't come. I would even be cautious when it comes to to tourists from Islamic countries. On the other hand, I think there should be a Christian state in the Middle East. And that state should be protected by, by world powers somehow. There should be a nation for Middle Eastern Christians. Because Christians in the Middle East, I think they were 20% of the population a century ago. Today they're down to 5% or something like that. A lot of them have been killed or they have fled to Europe, to North America, to South America. Because you're just not safe in an Islamic country if you're a Christian or if you're anything else than a Muslim, actually. And the right kind, too. You don't want to be Sunni in Iran. You don't want to be Shia in, in Saudi Arabia. Let's see. Leonardo Russo says, Sir, which country in Europe is the next to shift right, according to your opinion? I'm not, I, I, I'm not sure... Uh, I'm really not sure about uh, about that. Italy is going the right way, but they just had their election. May I mean we could we might be surprised. It might happen in Germany. There are a lot of protests going on in Germany now. Maybe the Germans aren't as conformist as I thought they were. We'll see. I know there's been a lot of stuff going on there recently. Uh, Skipper Clement says there are Swedes at my workplace here in Denmark, both ethnic and non-ethnic Swedes. How do I red pill them most effectively? I have been trying carefully so far. Um, I guess it depends on what kind of Swedes. If they are pro, if they are pro free speech, or if they are, we shouldn't talk about that. I I would have asked them what they think about the Danish, about the Danish debate as compared to the Swedish debate. But that could go both ways. I mean, I I don't know because. Even when I was a Marxist, which was for a few years, and I left because they were crazy. But even then, I've never really been. I've never really been. Uh, I've never really been conformist. So, in so, I never really followed the crowd that way. As as they say in the, in the movie about Margaret Thatcher, what's that movie again? Her dad told tells her, "Don't walk with the crowd. Go your own way." Uh, the Iron Lady, that's the movie. You should watch it, by the way. And they haven't paid me to say this, but you should watch it. Uh, Carol Worth says, interesting idea, Jay. Well, it's not really my idea to begin with. But yeah, I like that idea. Um, John Jake says, Lebanon was a Christian country but had an open borders policy. Now they are persecuted. Israel is the only civilized nation there. That's why they are hated. Yeah, that sums up my opinion pretty, pretty accurately. And uh, yeah, you know there are Lebanese Christians living in Sweden, and uh, compared to other more recently arrived immigrant groups, the Lebanese Christians haven't caused any major disturbances in Sweden. Uh, there have been some trouble with Syriac Christians because of clan culture, but they are haven't tried to impose some kind of Sharia on Sweden either. So if you talk to 
to Middle Eastern Christians who live in Sweden or in any Western country, they will usually be a lot harsher on Islam than Western Christians are because, well, they experienced it. Western Christians and Westerners in general will, seems like we will have to experience this and maybe that will wake us up. I wish we would learn by other people's mistakes, but it seems, seems like that won't happen. But what I do believe in, I do believe that what we are looking for, we don't need a majority. People sometimes are very, people sometimes think that there's no hope because we won't ever get a majority. In general, we don't need a majority. We need critical mass. Critical mass is something like 10% of the population because most people are followers. Sounds horrible, but that's the way it is. Most people follow. I think most people in this chat are not among the followers because then you wouldn't be watch watching this. But the thing is, most people are followers. So if you, if you get critical mass of say 10%, Followers will start following this critical mass because a critical mass of 10% will be a majority of the people actually saying or doing anything and not just sitting passively and staring at the TV screen or the computer screen or something like that. Uh, Rex Sigmar says, there is no room for other ideas in Islamic countries. So sad, but that is how it is. Sadly, Islam will not integrate into Western cultures. It is impossible according to, to their ideological nature. Yeah, that's true. And that's not only true when it comes to Islam versus Western cultures. It's true wherever they go. They had, they had this politician in, was it in Singapore, I think? His name was Lee something. I posted about him a few weeks ago. Uh, back in 2010, 2011, he said that in Singapore, other groups assimilated in, into the culture and intermarried with the natives. If they were from India, if they were Chinese, it's all good, but the Muslims just wouldn't assimilate. And uh, I think you can see that all over the world because this ide ideology of multiculturalism, that's really a code word for Islamization. Because when they talk about multiculturalism in Europe, in Scandinavia, it's never about Argentinian tango, it's not about uh, Japanese food. It's not about some Native American stuff. It's about none of that stuff. It's always about Islam. Always. It's, and it's always a conflict between Islam, or let's say Muslims, and other people. Uh, back in the 70s, people from Latin America moved to Sweden. A lot of them from Chile. They were escaping from Pinochet. And they assimilated. I mean, okay, some of them are still crazy leftists. Some of them left those ideas too, by the way. I know some people of Argentinian background in Sweden who are very sane people and who are actually harder on the migration policies than most Swedes are. But the point is, there were some trouble with these people to begin with, but they assimilated in a generation. Muslims have been arriving in Sweden since the 70s too. To begin with, a few Turks. Eventually, you had people from the Balkans, and then you got Middle Easterners, you got Somalis, and these people won't assimilate. And it's not about what they look like, it's what's in their minds. And that's why, and in Norway, you had Vietnamese people and Pakistanis arriving at the same time in Norway. To begin with, there were some clashes with both of them, but the Vietnamese people assimilated. You never hear of Vietnamese gangs causing any trouble, you never hear about any conflict with Buddhists in Norway, but you hear about conflicts with Pakistanis and with Islam all the time. And uh, so it's about Islam, really. Uh, Leonardo Russo says, Western culture is nothing without Christianity. It is an empty idea ready to be invaded, contaminated and destroyed. That's true. That is exactly true. And, and that's why to Islamize the West, you need Marxism and political correctness. That's what you need first, because you need someone to, to weaken the culture from within, to be able to allow it to be invaded, because civilizations are not killed. Civilizations commit suicide, sadly. Sadly, this happens. It has happened historically before. The Roman Empire 
was weakened from within, and then they fell. And parts of the West have been severely weakened from within, and they are going downhill. I hope that some parts of the Western civilization will survive. I have some hope for Central Europe. I have hope for mainland USA, maybe not the, the West Coast and part of the East Coast, but the Midwest, Texas, places like that, I think they will survive, especially since they have the Second Amendment. Canada, I don't know. Maybe they'll turn around in the next election and things will go wonderful. Maybe, I don't know. Western Europe, I hope I'm wrong, but it looks like it's going downhill. It looks like France is going downhill. It looks like the UK is going downhill. It looks like Scandinavia is going downhill. Maybe Denmark isn't, but Sweden and Norway sure is. It looks like Germany is going downhill and so on and so on. Uh, John Jake says, in England, Sikhs, Hindus and Jews are as British as I am. No major cultural difference. Actually, I know that there are Sikhs in England who have been organizing against Islam. I mean, I know there were Sikhs on some of these marches uh, that Tommy Robinson uh, uh, organized. Let's see. A Syrian king says, I know Iran and Iranian turning their back to Islam and becoming Christians and the stupid West giving up to... Yeah, that's crazy. There is a revival going on in Ir Iran among ordinary people, sort of underground. I've been hearing about it for a few years. Some Iranian Christians living in Norway have told me. And also, many Iranians are actually pretty sane. But Iranians, the, one, the ones I met, they have either been very sane or really insane they're set seldom they're seldom in the middle and the sane ones i'm happy to have them especially those who not only leaves islam but also accepts christianity but there are a lot of ex-muslim iranians living in in the west uh, let's see perito brodersen says when islam becomes the majority forget multiculti Islam and multiculture don't go well together. Good evening, everybody. Good evening to you too, Perito Brodersen. And that's absolutely correct. Uh, and I'm all for that people can have their different cultures. You can eat whatever you want at home. As long as you're not clashing into the surrounding society, I'm fine. But with Islam, that's not going to work. You can have a Chinese restaurant in Denmark or a Turkish restaurant, no problems. But once you start putting on masks and you want these prayer calls and you want to you want your women to cover up, then you have a problem. Carol Worth says, my kids and I live in Southern California. Please pray for us. Okay, Carol Worth, I will, absolutely. And uh, well, you know, you've been following my channel for almost since it started. So you've been a blessing to my channel and to what I'm doing. So absolutely. I'll put it down here and I'll put it, I'll put it down here now. Pray for Carol Worth and kids and the people in the chat absolutely pray for south southern california and, and for carol worth and her family uh, leonardo russo says yes my ex-girlfriend is a christian iranian girl by the way i live in turkey uh, oh that's interesting uh, so that's very interesting because turkey I would be careful about li living in Turkey. I, I don't I don't even want to go to Turkey. And I guess I could, could go to Turkey as a tourist. But uh, to put it that way, I, I don't want to fund Erdogan's uh, regime. So I don't I, I don't want to I don't even want to buy Tur Turkish goods if I find them here because I don't want to give money to Erdogan. Carol Worth says, it goes both ways, Jay. Really appreciate all you do. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, Leonardo Russo says, I will send you a message. You will know why I'm here. Yeah, I'm sure you have a good good reason to be in Turkey. I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't move there for fun, but, well, it's like I say, certain places I don't want to go. But if God tells me to go there, I will. If God would tell me to become a missionary to Somalia... I would go there. I might argue a little with the Lord first and say, do I have to? But if God really told me you have to go to Somalia, I would. Mm. Lisa Leto says, 
having trouble donating. I don't know your PayPal currency and Super Chat won't sign me in. Actually, if you go to PayPal, you can choose currency. You can choose whichever currency you want. Uh, where it says, I'll look at my PayPal link to see how to explain that. One moment. I'll post my PayPal link while, while going through this. Let's see here. So Lisa Leto, if you go to my PayPal link, hopefully that one should work. You never know with these links in the super in, in this chat. Oh, I see. Uh, for some reason, the link won't really work. But what you do is you just if you just refresh the link. No, OK. Um, how do we do this then? Uh, well, if you look in the box below my my this live stream, there is another there is another PayPal link under there. I'll check that one. That one should work. This is why I don't like technology. Yeah, that one works. So if you go to that link, uh, and where it says uh, it says zero n o k, at the side of the n o k you have a little sign. It's like an arrow pointing downwards. If you click at that sign. You get different currencies, and you can just choose USD for US dollars or whichever currency you prefer. Uh, so, if you're still here, Lisa Leto, just let me know if you if you understood what I was trying to explain here. Tyron Twitelle says, "Swede, if you had a Bible verse to quote for today, what verse would it be?" Okay. I'll I'll go with the, uh, today I'll go with the obvious one, or which might be the obvious one. I'll I'll get it. Let's see. It's the Gospel of John, chapter three, and it should be verse. Oh, it's verse sixteen. So okay, Tyron, it's John, chap, the Gospel of John, chapter three, verse sixteen. For so lo loved, so for God so loved the world that He gave His one and only Son, that whoever believes in Him shall not perish but have eternal life. So, if I get to pick one, I'll, I'll go with that one. Uh, Farnesius says, Martin Selner and Brittany Pettibone arrested and banned from entering UK. Actually, I don't know who Martin Selner is, but I have heard of Brittany Pettibone. She's a YouTuber, I think. Uh, is she American, Canadian, something? Uh, and that's why I'm saying, okay, I'm going to London, but oh, I hope they'll let me in. Uh, but I mean, I have uh, I have had layovers in London. Uh, uh, I have had. Uh, Layovers in London uh, when I've been traveling back and forth between Norway and America, they haven't stopped me then. But okay, then they were kind. Of, then, then they kind of knew that I was going to leave the country anyway. But we'll see what happens. Hopefully, everything will be fine, and uh, I'm going to London on April 12th. But, and I will. I mean. I will, of course, plan to live stream from my London hotel room. Then I found a pretty cheap hotel, and I'll uh, I'll share that hotel room with a friend of mine. Uh, he's been to, he's been in my channel before, so we might do a live stream with him as a studio guest. That could be interesting. We can talk about Sweden, the UK, stuff like that. And then also, hopefully, I'll be able to interview some some people in England in London we'll see uh, Farnesius says Selner is leader of generation identity and Pettibone his girlfriend oh I see okay let me say this even though I'm not very fond of the identitarian movement I still think he should be allowed to travel I mean I believe in freedom of speech as long as you don't incite to violence you should be allowed to say whatever you want, uh, period, as long as you don't incite. And you, he, so he should be free to travel. Uh, 
and of course I know you could make the argument that in that case I should just allow people to say whatever in this chat. But I consider this chat to be to be kind of my living room, and uh, so there are certain things I won't allow in the chat if I see them. That also goes for personal attacks against me, but I haven't seen any of those for a few weeks. I think those haters gave up. Uh, Assyrian King says, you will come to London, my friend. I am here. Okay, Assyrian King. Yeah, I look forward to that. And I will have I will take a long weekend in London, although I will be working while I'm there. Or I mean, I will make some videos and I will live stream. Uh, that, that's what I'm going to do. And uh, I intend to go watch uh, Darkest Hour when I'm in London because I still haven't seen it. So don't don't give me any spoilers. Uh, but so that so the 12th of April is on a Thursday and I'm leaving on the Monday so it's a long weekend so I should be able to yeah I, I should be able to meet with people in London then and since it's a weekend coming up then I assume there will be people who have time to talk to me plus who knows maybe Tommy Robinson responds I don't think so but who knows maybe he does uh, Leonardo Russo says, sir, his movement is a good movement. It has nothing to do with, with Nazism. Maybe not. Maybe I'm being too hard on them. Maybe my problem is um, focusing, focusing on ethnicity. And maybe they don't. Maybe I've gotten it all wrong. I, I don't know. But, well, I guess that's my, that's my problem. But, but what, whatever my problem is, it doesn't really matter because I still think... For instance, that this, uh, what was his name? Sebastian Melner? No, it was something. Well, whatever his name was, I still think he should be allowed to travel. And I mean, if he's an Austrian citizen, he should just be allowed to go to, to the UK, period. A Syrian king says, you have a good tour guide here. Oh, I'm happy to, happy to hear that. Uh, and uh, I intend to go visit... Uh, Margaret Thatcher's grave too, and I'll probably record that. Maybe, maybe I'll have my, maybe I'll have my friend to say a few words about her. A Pinochet says, "Have a great time in Poland. Uh, you're going to have an eye-opening experience." Yeah, we'll see what happens. That's that will be interesting. And Tyron Tuitele says, uh, "Swede, thank you, brother. Yeah, thank yeah, thank you too." Actually. Let's see here. Oh, I'll have to look at the right link here. Um, so, by the way, in a few minutes, uh, uh, a Syrian king says, M. Thatcher's grave is out of London. Oh, I think it's in Chelsea or something like that. That's what I've been told, at least. Uh, so I've been on for close to 90 minutes now. So I'm about to wrap this up. So if you have any any closing comments, uh, uh, just give them to me now and we can talk about that for a few minutes. Uh, I'll wait a little and have a look at what's going on in the, in the chat. Not much going on in the chat. Let's see. Uh, a Syrian king says, have you heard that the top Muslim leaders to announce Erdogan as world Muslim king? I haven't heard about that, but I wouldn't be surprised by that either. If he's trying to, I don't know, turn into the new sultan or something like that. Carol Ward says, my phone is dying, so thank you so much, Jay. Hope you all have a nice Sunday. God bless you. Thank you very much, Carol. And I'm about to leave too, so... Uh, so have a nice Sunday. I won't. I don't think I will do any anything until uh, until Tuesday. And on Tuesday, I think I'll I'll do my midweek live stream. Then I will produce a video on Wednesday, and then I'll go to Poland on Thursday. On Monday, I have to catch up on on my writing. Uh, your your A Pinochet says Jan Sibieski must visit. Yeah, I'm going to Gdansk. I think I don't think Jan Sobieski is buried in, in Gdansk, but I don't think so. I could be wrong. Uh, 
Joel Aldrich says, did you start live chats here as early as the middle of last year, 2017? No, I started live chats in February, I think. Yeah, I, I, I haven't been doing this for that long yet. Baba the, Baba the Smoker says, saw you on ABL the other day. I'm a new subscriber. Okay, Baba, I'm about to leave, but I'm happy to hear that. And if you're looking, at, if you're watching ABL tonight, I'll try to call in again. I usually try to do that. Uh, Skipper. Clement says, thanks for answering my questions. Bye and enjoy your trips. Thank you very much. So that's about this, it for, for today. So, uh, okay, that, that's it for today. So I will, I will, as I said, I will most likely do a midway week chat on Tuesday. And then it's next Saturday from my hotel room in Gdansk, Poland. If the Wi-Fi is working, just let's just hope and pray for that. So until next time. Have a nice day or evening and God bless.